You want to get your hands on some juicy data, but you don't know where to find the data set. Well, now you will with these seven places that I'll show you where to find them. So you can use them on the projects and practice on. Plus, if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you a bonus one that will give you data that no one else will have. So with that in mind, let's get started. Let's start with number one, Kaggle. If you don't already know, Kaggle is probably one of the most popular places on the internet for data sets. And also they hold competitions for people to be able to compete to analyze different data sets as either sole people or even as groups. And because of that, there is a vast range of different data sets that you can get your hands on that are generally in a nice clean format, which makes it easy for you to just dive in and start pulling the data that you want. And also gives a summary of all the different data points in the data set. Also, another great thing is that you can actually see what other people have done on that data set. So you can view their code, you can learn from it, or just get some inspiration. Number two, data.world. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll notice that I've talked about data.world quite a bit. And just like Kaggle, it has multiple different data sets. So you can find so many different things to be able to play around with from the data you can find in there. And also it comes in different formats as well. So you need to be careful when what you're looking for to see if you can actually find the data set that you want. One of the unique things that you can actually do with data.world is that you can actually do SQL queries to be able to practice your SQL querying on any of the data sets that you look at on the site. But in addition, you can actually pull directly into Power BI those different data sets. And all you need to do is click on the Power BI option and it will give you the detail that you need to load in to the connector on the Power BI desktop as I'm showing on screen. And once it's connected and you're happy with the data, you can just load in like normal. And now we're up to number three. Google data search. Now, as you expect, it's Google. So Google, you can do a search. And this is what this exactly does. The good thing about this is that you can search all different data sets from one place. So it even brings up stuff from Kaggle and data.world. But it also brings up other sites that may cost money to actually access the data set, which is not so great. Unless you're happy to pay the money, do so. But there are additional places where you can actually get data for free that is not just Kaggle or data.world. And the good thing is, once you go into the particular site, you can also view the data so you can see if it's anything of use to you before you download it. So we're over halfway, number four, R. If you didn't already know, in R, there are data sets that you can already play around with. You might have heard of the Titanic data set and the MT Cars data set. Well, those data sets are part of the inbuilt data sets in R. And the good thing about this is it's really simple to actually get that information once you load up R Studio. All you need to do is type in data with an open and closed bracket, and then it will pull up all the list of all the different data sets to look at. And then if you want to view and actually use the data set, it's just type in the name of the particular data set and then run it, and then it will show you the data. Now you might be thinking, why if I don't want to use it in R? Why if I want to use it in Power BI? Well, got you covered. In Power BI, you have a connector that's called R script, and this allows you to actually add in your R script to be able to pull in data. If you had any R coding that you were using to pull data and you wanted to use that to then go into Power BI, you could technically just copy and paste that coding and then pull it into the R script connector. So in this case, if you're just gonna use a data set that's in R, all you have to do is type in the connector data and then within the brackets, the name of the particular data set that you want to use. And then you just transform and load just as normal. And it's that simple. So now we're up to number five, Microsoft. So when you search for Microsoft data sets, the interesting thing is that you do not only just get your data sets that can be in sort of like an Excel format, but you also have the additional luxury of being able to get hold of SQL databases as well, which you can download and install into SQL Server to play around on. So not only do you have different access to different data sets that are in Excel format, but then you can get your hands on ones that are in SQL format as well. And now I need to use more hands. Number six, Harvard Dataverse. So this one only came across quite recently. And the only reason why I'm including it is because it's used by people to actually upload data research that they've done to get credit. So you can get a vast range of different interesting data sets that you wouldn't find anywhere else. So it's a good place just to kind of, if you want something a little bit left field to look at, this is a great place to actually look. And it just has a wealth 
of research data sets in here. And now we're up to number seven, government data. So if you want to get your hands on some interesting government data, I know we're not talking Area 51, but wanted to sort of get some information around the census or some healthcare information, this is a great place to actually start to look for that particular type of data. So to easily find country government data, you can start typing in, say for the US, data.gov. And if you wanted to do the UK, you can do data.gov.uk. And there'll be other countries as well that will be using the similar standard. You just need to just do a bit of searching just to find those particular ones. But if you just type in data.gov and then the country name, you'll be able to find different data sets there. But for a good starting point, the US and the UK ones have got a wealth of information there that you can play around with and get an understanding. As you stay to the end, I'm now going to give you your bonus data set. And that is your data. Yes, you heard that right, your data. And what I mean by your data is the data that no one else will have unless you've been hacked, which is a bit unfortunate. And because only you have that data, it makes it unique for you to do your own data analysis on that no one else will be able to. So a good example of using your own data that's quite easy to get hold of is using your bank statements or your credit card statements to look at your spending and analyze that. Or you could contact companies like Spotify or Fitbit and actually request your data and in those data sets, you can then do some analysis. So with Spotify data, you could then look at what you've liked over the particular months and year and what you've listened to. And with Fitbit, you could track your steps, you can track any of your health metrics and also look at your sleep, which is probably the most important one, not only for your health, but also for productivity. So then you can get that data directly from them. Both those type of data sets you can actually request in the links below. But when it comes to anything with your data, just think outside the box and think of something what would be quite interesting that you would like to analyze and then look to see if that data is available to download or request. So I hope this video has given you loads of inspiration to be able to actually start diving into different data sets and get practicing or get going on those projects that you've been meaning to for so long and start analyzing anything and everything. And as always, until next time.